Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I would do a review on my Browning High Power Clone. This particular High Power Clone is a licensed copy of the Browning High Power. But before we go any further, let's drop our magazine, rack our slide, and safety check our weapon. There we go, all clear. This particular clone was made by a Hungarian company by the name of Fag. I picked it up at a local pawn shop for about 500 bucks about two weeks ago. It is a double stacked 9mm 13 round magazine. Which when I first got this gun it did not have the correct magazine. And this ended up costing me around 70 bucks. For a military surplus gun the bluing on this gun is just excellent. The controls on this gun are almost identical to your typical 1911. As well it should be, because both were designed by John Browning himself. This particular gun was designed in 1923 and happens to be John Browning's last design. So of course our slide stop is in the same place as the 1911. As you can tell I had to paint my front sight red. This allows me to get a better sight picture overall. Being designed in 1923, the sights are not exactly the greatest, but they're manageable. As we can see, our hammer, just like the 1911, it has a safety notch. As long as it's in that position, we cannot drop it. It also happens to have, just like the 1911, a thumb safety. This allows you to carry your weapon cocked and locked. Should the hammer fall, the safety will catch it keeping it from striking the firing pin. I guess maybe we should move on now to takedown. Takedown is a little bit different than the 1911. You see, we'll use our thumb safety as a part of our disassembly. By locking our thumb safety into the first notch, this will allow us to remove our slide release. Now most people have a little bit of trouble but the trick is to push your slide release just slightly up and then push from the other side. This will allow the slide release to come right out. Now all we simply must do is drop our thumb safety and the slide should slide right off of the frame. Unlike the 1911, this gun has more of a modern captured recoil spring and disassembles like more modern weapons. I had a little bit of trouble with this as my camera wasn't exactly in the best spot. Let's take the barrel out. These slides are really really good. Solid steel. And here we can see our guide rod and our spring. And of course, our barrel and its locking lugs. This is a solid stainless steel barrel. The rifling for this gun is pretty great. The crowning isn't bad either. Being a military surplus gun, I don't know if this thing saw much use. Even the bluing's in pretty much immaculate condition. I've seen these guns come back to the country where the bluing had almost completely wore off the gun. Reassembly is pretty much just the same, only in reverse. The guide rod was a little bit tricky getting in. Like I say, this was a weird spot for me to do, with the camera angle being the way it was. There we go. Finally got it into place. You know, picking this gun up for $500 was pretty good, in my opinion. I believe if you get a chance to get one of these, you should definitely pick one up. I believe the value is only going to increase. And so here we see us putting our safety lever back into the first notch, which allows us to put our slide release back into the weapon. It's as simple as that. You know, I believe in, up until the modern era, this was actually one of the slimmest 9mm that you could get your hands on. This gun has such a high cult following out there. 
as they get older and older, I'm starting to fall more and more in love with these older style weapons. You really just can't put enough value on one of these. I've probably ran over three to four hundred rounds through this gun so far, and I've not had a single failure. In my opinion, this is probably the best 1911 style 9mm ever created. I'm not going to go over the entire history of this weapon, as there are far too many videos on YouTube already about it. But in my opinion, this gun is probably, hands down, the coolest thing I've owned in a long, long time. Highly accurate. And of course, highly, highly reliable. The sad thing is, though, I don't think that Browning is producing these guns anymore. However, Keysaws, a Chinese company, happens to be reproducing it under the name of the Regent RB9. Which, you know, I think I'm going to try to run out and get me one of those just as soon as I can. If you happen to get your hands on one of these classic firearms, hang on to it. In my opinion, it is one excellent, excellent gun. I hope you guys enjoyed this review of my Browning High Power clone. And maybe we'll do another video later down the road with a little bit more in-depthness to it. See you guys around, and have a great day.